I'm your host EJ the Travel Diva and today you are in for a special treat. We're taking a tour of the Adinkra Village where we'll discover the rich symbolism behind Adinkra cloth and even learn how to make a beautiful scarf with these incredible symbols. So without further ado, let's dive in. The journey begins here at the enchanting Adinkra Village nestled in the heart of Ghana. As we step foot into the cultural haven, we're immediately greeted by a kaleidoscope of colors and the rhythmic sounds of artisans working diligently. This place is like stepping into a living, breathing museum of Ghanaian culture, where the traditions of the Akan people are celebrated and cherished. Before we start creating our very own Adikra scarf, it's important to understand the history and meaning behind these fascinating symbols. The Adinkra symbols have a rich heritage that dates back centuries. Originally used by the Akan people of Ghana, they were worn on special occasions like funerals, weddings, and festivals. Each symbol represents a unique concept or idea ranging from wisdom and bravery to love and unity. For example, at this time in my life, I selected symbols that represented change and being a new person. Too much drama in the USA and I wanted to return back to the USA a very new person. The ink used for Adinkra printing is made from the bark of a specific tree called the Batty Tree. Hey scientifically known as Basca. This tree is native to West Africa and holds a secret hidden within the bark, a rich dark pigment that will become the ink for our symbols. Once the bark is collected, it undergoes a thorough preparation process. The strips of bark are traditionally left in dry in the sun for several days, allowing them to become brittle and easier to work with. Afterward, the dried bark is carefully roasted over a fire, turning it into charcoal. The charcoal is then ground into a fine powder using a mortar and pestle, resulting in dark, inky substance. This powder will be the foundation of our Adinkra ink, but, we're not done just yet. There's another essential ingredient to add. A liquid binder, often derived from palm oil or a similar substance, is added to the powder charcoal. This binder helps create a smooth paste-like consistency and enhances the adherence of the ink to the fabric. The mixture is carefully blended until it reaches the desired texture, ensuring it's neither too thick nor too thin. And there you have it. Our handmade Adinkra ink is ready to be used for stamping the symbols onto the fabric. This process passed down through generations showcases the skills and craftsmanship of the Adinkra artisans who understood the importance of every detail in creating these beautiful works of art. Now that we know how the ink is made, it's time to roll up our sleeves, grab our printing tools, and dive into this existing process of creating our very own Adinkra scarf. So let's jump right in and let our creativity flow. Now comes the most exciting part, my friends, we get to make our own Adinkra scarf. We start by selecting our desired symbols from our wide array of options, each carrying its own unique meaning. Once we've made our choices, we'll learn the art of stamping. With printing tools in hand, we'll carefully apply the ink to the carved stamps and press them onto the fabric, creating a symphony of symbols and colors. We'll be guided by our wonderful instructors who will show us the steps to create a unique piece of wearable art. So let's roll over our sleeves, put on the creative hats, and let's get the craft adventure begin. Throughout the process, our instructor will share fascinating stories and anecdotes associated with each symbol, allowing us to connect more deeply with the culture and meaning behind 
Adinkra. By the end of our session, we'll probably hold our very own Adinkra scarf, a symbol of creative exploitation. And there you have it, folks. Our adventure through the Adinkra Village was an absolute blast. We learned about the history and the meaning behind the Adinkra symbols. We even made our own scarf. I really hope you enjoyed this, and I really hope that you would add this tour and activity to your next visit to Ghana. And I hope you will have as much fun as I did on this tour. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know about my upcoming videos where we'll continue to dive into fascinating cultures, traditions, and crafts from all around the world. Stay curious, stay inspired, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye y'all!